Hi, this is Phil Newman from Longevity Technology, and I'm delighted to say that I'm joined today by Andrea Meyer and Hans May from the National University of Singapore's Center for Healthy Longevity. Now, these guys have got a very interesting program as part of their Unlocking Healthy Longevity, which is the February 2024 conference relating to supplements and the immense potential that they represent for Giro protection. So, Andrea, can I just ask you, first of all, uh, what do you see as the crossover now? that's happening between therapeutics, obviously, which going through clinical pipelines and generally regarded as safe supplements. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for this very important question because uh, medicines normally are regulated by the FDA, et cetera, and the, the EMA, whereas supplements are just being being sold over the counter and not well regulated, uh, if you ask for my opinion. So, and we are talking about supplements and they are generally recognized as safe, but also they might be very potent. And I think if we are looking at uh, geoscience at the field of healthy longevity, we now see that some of the supplements being generally recognized as safe, that they might be very potent, but also there with maybe not safe because we do not know. So, but what we really experience in the field of geroscience at the moment that we understand why we age, we have molecules, how we can manipulate the system and otherwise these man, uh, molecules can be repurposed drugs. Think about metformin or rapamycin, et cetera, or even ACE inhibitors. And now we also understand that some of the supplements already over the counter might influence how long we live because we understand the mechanisms. So in the end, um, I think there, there is a, a fluid fluidity to see what is the supplement, what is the drug, because first we have to understand why we age and how we can antagonize it. So for me personally at the moment, it doesn't really matter because we are understanding how we age and how we can manipulate it. And some, um, for some of the interventions, we are using repurposed drugs and some, these are supplements. But um, we already know that some supplements might might be drugs in the end. Um, and and even we, we might do it vice versa. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, let, let's talk about that because of course, NMN is a, is a very famous NAD plus booster, you know, albeit a naturally occurring molecule. It's a very powerful molecule. And of course, it's not available in China. It's classed as a pharmaceutical in the USA. A lot of people are bent out of shape about this. I mean, is this something we're going to see more of going forward? I think so. So in NMN, of course, often our uh, of, of precursor of NED, a very, very good example, because now we understand that NED levels goes down and in certain conditions even more. And we now show not only in mice and in flies and uh, C. elegans that if we are supplementing with it, then, then the health spend and the lifespan is going up. We now have also human data. So, and of course, this is then the potential to reach a huge market um, while making such supplements um, uh, drugs and there was um, yeah bringing it to to the healthcare system. I think um, NMN is a very good example. What could occur with other uh, very potent uh, molecules? Think about physetin or spermidin or or others. I think we have to really see from long term data if the supplements are safe. What they do. We already know from NMN that in some of the mice studies we have a little bit more metastasis, and that's not what we want um, if we prescribe supplements in, in, in clinical care or, or if people are, are buying it over the counter. So I think the only solution here is, is long-term data in really getting, getting grip of safety profiles. And there was also for supplements doing phase one studies, which are very, very often not being done. Mm -hmm. So really knowing what the pharmacokinetics and the pharmacodynamics is. Well, I mean, obviously, that's that's a really interesting subject, which I guess we're going to pursue a little bit, a little bit more of because, um, Hans, you're now um, running the NUS Academy for Healthy Longevity and its incubator as well. Now, we see a lot of supplement companies coming onto the marketplace. And as Andrew's just identified, some of them are classified as grass. So they're not going through the traditional clinical pipeline of, of, of safety first, uh, market later, right? So obviously the market's now. So, so how are you finding that with the way that you're perhaps screening uh, new, uh, new technology-based companies or new supplement-based companies coming into your incubator and, and uh, your wheelhouse, as it were? 
Well, the best answer is to go back to where, why did we found the uh, academy? The reason for um, uh, founding another academy, there are many academies in the world, is that we think that the field of longevity requires more knowledge and more education. Uh, at the moment, there are three reasons for us to do it. We need new people from onset, students who are interested in another way of healthcare, another way of thinking about healthcare. And that's what we do in the incubator. We strive to educate people who are working in the field, either clinically or non-clinically. And that's where uh, <clears throat> all... <clears throat> Sorry, we have to... My, my voice is breaking up. I'm, I'm taking that back. Um, secondly, we are um, uh, focusing on people who are working in the field already that might be clinical or non-clinical, that might be in industry or non-industry, uh, but we think that they need to update the knowledge and we have the knowledge and they need the knowledge to, uh, to make sure that uh, all those non-registered uh, and non-proven um, uh, um, uh, supplements are uh, in a better situation or are um, out of the market and that we can replace them with all kinds of uh, supplements that are proven. Since at the moment, yeah. there is too much um, nonsense going on in the, in the field. <laughs> so <laughs> what we Joe, provide is knowledge. And so, so maybe to, to, to maybe explore that at that, that kind of concept of nonsense, I mean, you know, of course there's... Uh, there's a lot of serious money going into supplements at the moment. A lot of people are looking at um, the claims that are being made around grass supplements. Um, obviously, some of them are making claims about, you know, brain health or muscle health or some form of immune health. And of course, Andrew, you've identified that some of these could be migrating towards being classed as um, supplements, uh, as pharmaceuticals in the future. Um, so that's a bit of, bit of a risk, right? I mean, as an investor looking at the marketplace, that could be quite concerning. W would you say that that's something that is the conference is going to be attending to? And uh, would I would asking the question? I mean, do you feel that you would be overcompensating by looking at these uh, as potentially as therapeutics, or do you feel that this is a black hole in the industry that people haven't really started thinking about properly? It's not that we are judge uh, uh, the supplement market, but what we do at the conference is, first of all, bringing all um, all ideas and we bring the knowledge and we bring the evidence that's most important into a conference. So we really describe how supplements work in the preclinical setting and the clinical setting, how they are being used also in clinical practice. So we have case reports. We bring consumers in to say, okay, what, what is your motivation to take 10 or 20 supplements or sometimes even 30 per day? And, um, and, and what is your thought? We also bring the regulators in mm -hmm. and we also bring in people in uh, who are testing supplements, uh, not from a consumer market, but from a quality perspective. And then bringing all these visions together to see, okay, wh where are we when we link it to the longevity field? So it's not judging what works and what doesn't work, but it's more really realization of where is the evidence and where is it not? Where could it be harmful and where not? Um, I will give you an example. Lots of people take multivitamins. Um, I haven't seen so many um, uh, deaths uh, due to multivitamin pills. I, I, ha I had a couple of, of patients on the ICU mm -hmm. unit because of liver and kidney failure because of it. Mm -hmm. um, so... I think it's it's fine to have supplements, to have herbs within TCM. This will also be, be one of the topics. But most importantly, I think we have to see how supplements and what role it has in the geroscience and health and longevity medicine field without any judgment. Mm -hmm. um, but I think what we need is a little bit of framework, how we use it. So maybe uh, we're getting ahead of ourselves a little with some of the, the potential issues that may come further downstream. But what you're saying really, if I understand it correctly, is that if I'm taking 30 supplements a day, there may be contraindications sitting within the within that regime that I've maybe self-prescribed. Um, you know, a lot of supplements are relying on marketing claims and sometimes, you know, those claims are obviously uh, within the confines of regulation, they are regulated. Uh, but of course, perhaps we need to have a, 
uh, a bridge into the clinical community to really understand that the power of these of these supplements needs to be put into a much more structured regime for individuals. And of course, that's highly personalized as well, right? So I guess that there are really quite a lot of subjects that you're pulling together with the conference now. Yeah, I think there's two problems, So, or three. First of all, I think we have to test ingredients, single ingredients, to see what how they work and how, how often people should take them and, and think about dosages, etc. The second thing is uh, putting, for example, different ingredients together. We have in humans not many data except, of, for example, the Cosmos trial where multivitamins were being tested. Uh, with, with a little effect, um, but not not much. And I think then the personalization kicks in at the third point that we do not know what is right for that person at this moment in time. And also considering that you might test yourself before taking any supplements to actually see what you need. And I think here the, um, the science really is lacking behind who should take NMN, who should take uh, certain other supplements uh, being a Jira protectors, or who should take a multivitamin pill. So I think here um, a huge arena of new research kicks in um, to really um, not personalize it, but to stratify individuals um, to, to really see where their need is. So Hans, let me talk about uh, Asia Pac with you in relation to you know the fact that Hong Kong is pretty open, China is pretty closed. Yep. You know, Australia and New Zealand are geographically a long way from those marketplaces, and you're based in Singapore. So, so what's the case for Singapore as a good market for starting? You know, in terms of both the scientific approach to supplements as well as perhaps the commercial side. Um, I think that um, the reason for coming to Singapore on our side was the fact that the opportunities are there. The population, the, the government understands that the population is aging. They see that they need to do something else than, than um, the, the conservative healthcare that we know of um, and that we need new approaches. Uh, that's why the, uh, the academy came to Singapore. That's why the longevity center is in Singapore. And um, the, uh, the combination of a huge um, number of investors who are really interested in longevity and uh, the fact that Singapore is promoting a healthy longevity and a new approach of healthcare gives wonderful opportunities. Um, we have been in, Mel in Melbourne, in, 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 in Australia for a long time. We didn't see the opportunities there. I'm working in Holland. I don't see the opportunities here at the moment. Um, we, have, we meet a lot of people who, are, who understand that we need to do something else. But the, um, the commercial uh, and enterprise uh, opportunities in Singapore are abundant and better than we have seen anywhere else at the moment. Um, so obviously there are quite a number of very important clinicians presenting at the conference. So uh, what sort of content can we inspect? Oh, sorry, let's do that. Take two. Take two. So there are a number of... Sorry, one second. Take two. So there are a number of very important clinicians presenting at the conference, Andrea. So uh, what sort of content can we expect and, and who are the attendees? Who should be attending? Yeah, absolutely. So it's a multidisciplinary conference where we really bring uh, like-minded people together who would like to just focus two days on one topic and that's supplements. So we, we always really try to approach a supplement based on what's known preclinically clinically, using it in clinical practice from a regulatory aspect and also from the manufacturing aspect. Because I think we need that, that chain of thoughts to really see where it is in relation to healthy longevity. So that's very important. It's about uh, supplements and its healthy longevity. And we brought, I think, a, a very, very nice group of key opinion leaders to the table. It's not only regulators and also politicians coming but especially only some known in the geroscience field like Paul Robbins or Laura Niederhofer or Brian Kennedy or Guido Kromer. So, and what we really try to achieve is linking the hallmarks of aging. We understand why we age together. Okay, how can we manipulate the system with, with supplements? Um, and um, yeah, it, it's, it is there with for, for everybody. Um, what, and for the industry, of course, because industry partners will be highly uh, represented there. And what we really would like to achieve is 
having that intense discussion and we will take time for these intense discussion where it is what is the need how can we bring even better products to the market in the end and what is needed uh, in terms of evidence. Okay, that's really good. And of course, this forms part of a, a much more structured week that you are addressing. The, the conference is two days, hands I understand, but there's more going on around it. Yes, so, um, since we think that um, uh, to uh, make most out of the conference, you need the broader perspective of longevity and where it's at, at the moment. So we brought together uh, the real leaders of longevity in the, the global field uh, in the intense course. And in those three days, we update you uh, in a very close knit uh, intense course. Uh, for all the um, development on the longevity field. And that is the best layer to um, have the uh, a wonderful conference and to be able to participate in all the discussions in the conference. So it's the, the, the first three days are an intense course to update you where is the field at the moment and the last two days are the conference on supplements. And that okay, is, and in our opinion, a, a wonderful combination of in-depth knowledge and updating and discussion on a very interesting subject of supplements. Well, great. Well, obviously, there's a lot going on in the sector and there's a lot going on in, in Singapore. So uh, how do people find out more, Andrew, about wh where to go and where to sign up for tickets? Yes, so that's very easy. Go to our CHL website, chlsummit.com, or go to the longevityacademy.com. SG, and you'll find all the information that otherwise contact us. Great. Well, uh, Andrea, Hans, thanks very much for joining us today. Fascinating. Thanks, Phil. Thanks for your time.